This episode of The Cellar Door is proudly brought to you by That's Amore Cheese. Visit that'samorecheese.com.au to check out their huge range of gourmet cheeses. And don't forget to follow them on Facebook. Welcome to Celador, or as the case may be, Private Beach. Right now we're at Tarinda Estate, one of two wineries we'll be visiting today on the Bellarine Peninsula. Pretty beautiful stuff, huh? Let's go and meet the crew. Hi Tim, we're here at Tarinda Estate where you have been since 2013. Yeah. yeah. But you've been around vineyards a bit longer than that, I believe. Yeah, a little bit longer than that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, did you grow up in Shepparton or? I grew up just out of Shepparton, but went to school in Shep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your parents had a little vineyard there that you messed around with? Yeah, we had an acre of Shiraz that we used to play around with and just make wine at home for ourselves and family. Mm -hmm. Do you have any of those bottles in storage There's anywhere? There's still some kicking around, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are they holding up? Um, variable, yeah, I would say. Sure. <laughs> so you've learnt a bit since We've, then. Oh, I think I've learnt a lot since then. Yeah. yeah. So you started here as a vineyard manager yep. and then moved into the role of winemaker. Yeah, so the previous winemaker left to Rinda and they, um, they asked me to step into that role as well, um, which was a big step for me. It happened just as I graduated from uni. It's good timing. Um, was good timing and very fortuitous for me, um, but it was also a big step for me to take mentally as well, mm -hmm. like a lot of responsibility. Um, so we've also taken on a consultant winemaker in John Durham, um, who's helped out for the 2016 vintage and 2017 vintage as well. Great. Yeah. So as the vineyard manager, you were you more involved sort of all across the vineyard and then in winemaking became more focused in one area? Um, well, I always helped. Part of my job was working in the winery during the vintage time with the winemaker. That was something I needed to be a part of the role. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd, I'd always been focused on the winemaking but enjoyed the viticulture side of it as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And have you changed a lot in terms of your interaction with the vineyards since that point? Um, no, I'm still like heavily involved in looking after the vineyard. Mm -hmm. um, I get a little bit extra help with just the labouring sort of work now. Um, but yeah, still really heavily involved in that and I wouldn't want to see that change mm -hmm. really. Lyndon from Torinda Estate, welcome to the cellar door. Oh, thank you very much. Now you've been a head chef yep. here for... Yeah, on and off for six, 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 years. six years, yeah. Mm -hmm. And has it changed much in that time? Uh, yeah, I think the business has really developed and, you know, like as I said, our, our wedding season is, uh, you know, we did about 70 odd weddings last year and I think there's even more next year, so it's a pretty lot. massive part of the uh, business now. So. Mm. And you also run cooking classes? Cooking classes as well, yep. Uh, we launched those last year that we started. Um, there was a fair bit of interest. It was something that was, I guess, kind of interested me, passing on a bit of knowledge to mm -hmm. you know, people. So, um, yeah. It's kind of at odds with that stereotype of the furious chef oh, yeah. <laughs> tucked away in the kitchen. It is, but I think, you know, uh, the industry really has changed. And, you know, gone are the days where you can just, people can be screaming at you. I know when I was apprentice, we certainly got yelled at and yeah. you know, run through the ringer, but 
but now you're now, doing dishes. Now I'm doing <laughs> dishes, so, you know, um, yeah. That's and you good. enjoy that passing on of knowledge. Yeah, too. I think it's in, yeah really good. And you have to embrace it. And, mm-hmm. You know, you kind of feel proud when, you know, the boys, they do something good and you, know, mm-hmm. you pass that on. So it's great. Yeah. Do you feel like your style as a chef has been shaped by this area? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a bit more laid back and, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we're open to new things down here, so mm-hmm. it's not so much of that, uh, yeah, um, you know, molecular stuff that they see. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a bit more, you know, simple food, let the food sort of do the talking. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And has that kind of philosophy of that classic, let the food do the talking, yeah. has that been your style for your entire career? I guess it has, you know. Um, I haven't sort of changed too much over the years, but yeah, that classically trained and yeah, just mm-hmm. technique is... I guess the base of most of our food here. So. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, now your menu here, yeah. do you design it daily? Uh, not daily, but yeah, we try and change it up as much as we can. Yeah, yeah. and so it's shaped by the local produce? Yes, yeah, and, and you know, we've got plenty of stuff that grows here on the property. Yeah. And you know, there's a few venues around, Drysdale Goat's Cheese and Manzello Grove Olives, you know, we get that stuff pretty regularly. And, mm-hmm. You know, they'll de- develop stuff that, you know, to suit our menu. Yeah, great. So that's a sort of symbiotic relationship. It is then. definitely a symbiotic relationship. You know, sometimes if we have leftover, you know, bread or stuff, we'll get, we'll feed it to the goats and stuff. So. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> the goats are pretty lucky. Yeah, they are lucky. So, I mean, you know, they get sourdough. <laughs> pretty lucky goats. Oh, fair luck. <laughs> Alex, you are the general manager of Tarinda Estate. Yes. What does that entail exactly? A bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Taking care of the company, looking into the future, what the potential for Tarinda, where we can develop, where we can improve, Mm -hmm. what the market requests, what the requests on our product. Can be wine, can be food, can be also wedding or events. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's a lot of business stuff? A lot of business. Mm -hmm. I like also the practical part of it. Mm. I like to be on the floor as much as being in behind to organize things. So mm-hmm. I'll be sp- splitting my week with uh, office job during the week. And the weekend I'll be on the floor just mm-hmm. to see how things are running, how things are going. Mm-hmm. I'll have a real feedback from my customer and see what we can do for them, what we can do better. Mm-hmm. Just try to always be on top of what's happening around and sure. what the fashion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do a lot of wedding. We're really famous for weddings. Mm-hmm. We do have the ceremony spots. We do have access to a private beach. We have a capacity of 200 seats. So we're very popular for wedding. We host a lot of them. Mm-hmm. I'm always also part of weddings. I like do you to do be any of the planning? I don't do the planning. I could be replacing uh, my colleague, uh, Tiffany, but she handled it. And I'm, I'm more than a, an help a bit everywhere when needed mm-hmm. than a, at a fixed spot. Sure. Mm-hmm. So you could meet me on a weekend at the salad or, or at the restaurant or or Whatever. down the coast catching a yeah. wave, perhaps? Would be nice, but yeah. not on the weekend, more mainly during the week, but mm-hmm. yeah. good location for that, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, mm. perfect. It okay. is just spectacular. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. So Bellarine is a, an amazing location. And tell us a little bit about the history of the estate. So Peter and Kate Slattery bought this property in 2000. Mm-hmm. It was just a farm at the start. Mm. Peter Slattery's dreams was to produce the best wine he could. So he planted some grapes. First harvest was in 2004. 2005 was really the first commercial harvest. Um, it started with uh, Chardonnay, Pinot Gris, and Pinot Noir. So and there were no vines here at all? Not at all, nothing. Just a hable shed that it, it swapped into a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And then later on, he built this part with the Salador and the Haven venue and the winery downstairs. So he has been growing this property for the last uh, 17 years. Yeah, amazing. Doing well. And how it's grown. Yeah, an amazing place, amazing location, Mm -hmm. great view, great food. Um, Peter loved the French style wine. Mm -hmm. So he just tried to produce a wine which is always with a lot of complexity, really creamy and silky. Mm -hmm. Just obviously fit me well. (laughs) Very happy with that. Love the wine in here. Do you have a favorite wine? Yeah, I love the Pinot Noir. (laughs) The Pinot Noir on the Bellerin are really successful, mm-hmm. probably the most successful grape on the Bellerin, but I find that all wine, especially the Reserve, is really a magic wine. Mm-hmm. But there is also a patch of Shiraz grape? There is a patch of Shiraz which <coughs> get planted at the start 
for Kate Slattery, mm -hmm. which is in love of Shiraz. Mm -hmm. She did well because we have had the Dark Horse Award thanks to the Shiraz in uh, uh, two years ago. So that was from the Shiraz? That was mainly from the Shiraz, mm -hmm. from all the grapes altogether, because it's everything get marked, but the Shiraz was a big part of it. Oh, and sure. we've been lately very successful on Shiraz. We get, uh, this year we get classified in the top 20 Shiraz in Australia. Oh, congratulations. So we're doing very well with the Shiraz, so mm. Kate Slattery was having a very good She's test. pretty happy. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yes, it is. How does your job here differ? Obviously, it's very different, but a few key differences between the sort of managing of Torenda Estate and the managing of a thousand seat restaurant. Yeah, uh, we do. Torinda is more on producing something amazing. Mm -hmm. We want to be at the top on the wine, on the food. We want to produce amazing things. So we target really a nice service, nice food. Um, the plate has to be beautiful. The service mm -hmm. has to be amazing. You have time at Torinda. We're not rushing it. Mm -hmm. You want to spend four hours for your lunch? Please <laughs> do it. Yeah. Just it's freedom and it's really a place that Peter wanted to be a place to enjoy. Mm -hmm. So that's the main point. It's have a wonderful experience at Terinda, that's what we want. We're not after numbers, we don't want to do a lot of people. We just want people being happy mm -hmm. and have a fantastic experience. So that's really the difference. Mm -hmm. And just this is obviously be, something yeah, important it's magic. to you too. Yeah. It is, it is. It's really nice to have guests who are delighted with their experience, who came back, who know us, who follow us, who buy wine, discover new wines, and yeah, that's magic. It's mm -hmm. a very different relation. Mm. Giorgio from That's Amore Cheese, welcome to Cellar Door. Hi George, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You're going to be walking us through some of your cheeses each week. Yes, mm -hmm. we want to start with this one this mm. week. It's called Lavato. Lavato. It means washed. Mm -hmm. Practically, we try to reproduce a cheese, a very important cheese in Italy called Taleggio. It's a wash rind cheese, mm -hmm. comes from North Italy near the Alps, and uh, is practically this square shape with this yellowish, uh, pinkish uh, rind. Mm -hmm. This rind comes from because we're washing the rind several times after the mold starts to growing, and uh, also the, the mold that they're growing and the washing create a microflora, a special smell, fantastic smell. Mm. And, uh, uh, and also, um, if we're cutting this, and I'd like to show you. Look at that. And we, underneath the crust, you have also um, um, maturation with the cheese, it become very nice and gooey mm. and uh, practically this, uh, I, somebody described this as a perfect cheese for runny dye. Excellent. So what do you need? You need just a glass of wine with, with this cheese, a good company, you can mm -hmm. stay in hours all day when it's raining with this cheese. Yeah, and a block this size. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, look at that, looks amazing. This is the cheese also, the Taleggio style, the Lavato, have a lot of applications in true recipe. Uh, lightly, some chef are using a lot in risotto, in uh, pizza, mm -hmm. or other dishes like in Voltini with asparagus or other stuff. Mm -hmm. through using this cheese. So we have lots of different applications. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Giorgio. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's try some. Yes, let's. It smells fantastic. Mm. It smells like a great afternoon. More for me. <laughs> Cheers. I'm here at Scotchman's Hill with Robin Brockett, Chief Winemaker. Hey Robin. Yeah, thanks for coming and uh, welcome to Scotchman's Hill. Thank you so yeah. much. Now Robin, you started here in 1988. Yep, that's correct. Were you the Chief Winemaker then? Uh, back then uh, when I came I was a boy in short pants, sure. <laughs> uh, quite young, uh, originally from New Zealand to uh, come across at Charles Sturt. I had a uh, scholarship to finish off my study and then okay. moved down here, thought I was coming for two years. And I'm and, still here. Yeah. <laughs> that was, how many years ago was that now? Oh, too long to remember, nearly 30, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so, 
I assume some things other than the length of your pants have changed yeah. in that time? Yeah, the industry's uh, changed dramatically around mm. here. When I first came, uh, there were only two fully full-time winemakers in the region. Sure, uh, in myself, the whole region? In the whole of Geelong. Uh, so myself here and uh, Gary Farr over at uh, Bannockburn Vineyards at that oh, stage. Wow. And there were quite a few other wineries, quite a few of them, quite small, but they tended to be owner-operator mm -hmm. wineries. So um, the people that uh, owned them were doing all the work, but um, yeah, we were the only two actually employed full-time in the region. Uh, what was it that got you into wine? Because you were <coughs> you're from New Zealand originally. Yep, yeah, from uh, the Shaky Isles of Christchurch especially. Uh -huh, um, yeah. But yeah, I went to uh, Ag College there when I left school and started doing, I think it was agricultural economics or something mm -hmm. like that, some boring So not subject. wine making? No, and had a, after a year I had to go and work on a property as part of the degree. So I went and worked at the first commercial winery down there and sort of got the bug. But um, as a teenager growing up, my mother used to make homemade wine. So she'd make peach wine, elderberry, um, all that sort of stuff. Amazing. And uh, I used to give her a hand and help her in the kitchen and not something I ever thought I'd end up doing, but uh, How probably, different is that process? Yeah from the peach wines of your mum's kitchen. Well, it was all made in a bucket and sure. stuff like that, and <laughs> yeah. uh, in the linen cupboard fermenting and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, as a kid sort of seeing that happening and it was quite quite an amazing feat that mm. you'd end up with something that was juice and you'd end up with a wine yeah. at the end of it. Did you process. sample it? Uh, a little bit, but Not only a little. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now you obviously you've been here for a while yep. and you've had a few winemakers who are now working around the area yeah. come through yep. under your guidance. Yeah there have been quite a few people at different times because initially we were the only people in the region mm. so um, you know people came in that work here but you know since the two of us that were working 30 odd years ago there's probably now at a guess 40 winemakers in the region over that Amazing. period. So. Uh, yeah, it's a dramatic change mm. and it's great for the region. Brilliant. Yeah. And you guys have done a bit of work yeah, around... Yeah, our brand new cellar door. It's yeah. quite exciting today. Yeah. Our first day being uh, open to something we looked at about 12 months ago mm -hmm. to develop um, the old uh, barn that was here. We've refitted out as new cellar door. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we've got other plans uh, for the rest of it. Brilliant. The area here. But, uh, yeah, it's very exciting. And being on top of uh, Scotchman's Hill, we have fantastic views to Melbourne. Yeah across the bay and mm -hmm. out the back we look at uh, Queenscliff and the heads and You're everything like that. You're so, surrounded uh, gorgeous views. Yeah, the, the peninsula here is really like an island in the uh, stuck out in the ocean. So um, the main peninsula is only probably 25 kilometres long mm -hmm. and about 12k wide. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you feel like you're really out, out on an island, mm. which is... Is that why you feel at home? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and probably 20 or 50,000 years ago it probably was an island. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Now, as the chief winemaker yeah. who has been here for yeah. a little while, yeah. are you involved quite a lot in most aspects of the yep. winery? Yep. Uh, so from the vineyards, uh, my initial training was viticulture. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm heavily involved in the vineyards because uh, getting the fruit right in the vineyard it makes our job very easy in the winery. Mm -hmm. And really, if you do your job properly, as winemakers, we should be just looking after the wine and coaching it along. We can change styles and that sort of thing, but if you don't get the quality there, we can't put it in the winery. Mm -hmm. So um, we're really custodians of what the vineyard gives us. Mm -hmm. um, and our part of our job is just to look after it and massage it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, that's what uh, we really work on. Mm -hmm. Here we uh, try and use minimal interventions, mm. so especially in our winemaking, uh, all our red wines and all our white wines and barrel are 100% all fermented uh, so we use the indigenous yeast from the vineyards which is just on the grapes yep mm -hmm. yeah and floating around in the atmosphere um, all our malolactic which is secondary fermentation that all occurs naturally as well mm -hmm. uh, we don't add really anything to the wines or as little as we can mm -hmm. and our finings very limited so all our reds have no fining and with our whites um, we're very minimal or with our whites we were using uh, a lot of skinny milk so I go down the supermarket and buy skinny milk, mm -hmm. very low amounts. Um, but we've moved away from that now using a uh, vegetable product. Um, so your wine's vegan? <clears throat> yeah, so we're going down that line. Mm -hmm. of um, We get asked all the time about it. Mm. And my view is if 
it does the job as well as uh, the one we use as a potato extract. Mm -hmm. If it does the same job as what the milk does, then we'll use it. Yeah, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you make your own small batch, the Cornelius. Yep. So when you're making wine for Scotchman's Hill, you yep. work collaboratively with yep. Marcus Holt. Yep. We have a really great rapport. You work really yeah. closely with him. Yeah. Do you, does he work with you on the Cornelius or is that yep. just yeah, yours? Yeah, no, we, uh, we work on everything together. Okay. Yeah. So we make um, the Swan Bay and then we have our on-premise Jack and Jill label. Mm -hmm. And then Scotsman's Hill, we do the Cornelius together, but then we make wine for a few other clients on the peninsula here. So mm -hmm. yeah, we work uh, as a team together. It's uh, marvellous. And we make all decisions together. Mm -hmm. Occasionally we disagree, but most of the time we're on the same wave. Just have a glass of wine yep. and yep. work it out. Yep. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, yep. Robin. It's been a pleasure. Uh, now, Gavin, you're the cellar door manager here at Scotchman's Hill. Yep, that's right. What exactly does that entail? So I look after this space here, the cellar door, and, but also events. So mm -hmm. I look after when we go on the road to places like the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival. Oh, sure. Um, City Cellar, so we were there this year. You um, tour manage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we go on the road. Yep. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. And this is a new cellar door that we're in. It is, mm -hmm. yeah. Brand new. So it's actually, it used to be the uh, previous owner's old residence and there used to be uh, a pool table over on the other side where the bar is. And um, yeah, and here they used to, used to use it as a games room and we've got our private tasting room upstairs which used to be a bedroom. So fully converted, we've tried to keep the, uh, the charm that it had, so yeah. It's very charming. Yeah, especially so, the view. Yeah, amazing views. Because the business has sort of been booming, so to speak. Yeah, we've seen uh, heaps of growth down in the Bellarine Peninsula, um, not just us, the whole place. And there's, um, especially with the Port Phillip ferries coming down from the yep. Docklands to Port mm -hmm. Arlington, uh, and we, we've got a bus on the uh, on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, that runs from the terminal. So it comes to us and and uh, through other wineries, mm -hmm. heaps of different options. Yeah. Uh, people can come down, they don't have to drive, they can just jump on yeah. the bus. and Excellent, yeah. and they can taste some of this gorgeous wine. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so the, what we've got here is the Scotchman's Hill uh, Estate Shiraz, mm -hmm. all Bellarine fruit, and uh, I think Halliday gave it 95 points. Excellent, yep. thank and you Mr Halliday. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's had a very good run actually, we've gone from 95 points in 2012, 96 in 2013, and, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it won a gold medal at the wine show in Melbourne, the Royal Melbourne Wine Show. Excellent. So, but it's, it's actually what's most important to us is it's, um, the, the customers love it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's probably our best selling wine at the cellar door. So, oh, great. Yeah. Now Gavin, what led you into the wine industry? Well, it's, it's an interesting story. I used to work, um, I was doing uh, analytics in supply chain and I, I did some work in public health as well doing research, but over that period I used to go to the Federation Square showcases that um, I think ran for about 10 years. What were they showcasing? Just, it's literally, it's a, like a Melbourne Food and Wine Festival sure. event where you just go around and do tastings and um, just doing cellar door, dooring at, around different places, so I've been to about Oh, over hundreds of cellar doors around the, the world. Um, most sort of New Zealand, USA, Spain, France, Italy, which is probably not that special. But the thing that did it for me was uh, when I went on a, um, I went over to Spain for, to walk the Camino de Santiago from uh, St. Jean Pied de Port to um, Santiago de Compostela in Spain. Roughly how long is that? Yeah, 900 k's. Sure. So it's like walking from Melbourne to Sydney. Uh -huh. um, with a backpack and just on my own and, and met a lot of friends over there but you actually walk through the, the traditional route, there's different routes but you walk straight through the heart of Rioja. Uh -huh. So plenty of very, very good red wine there mm -hmm. and yeah, just fell in love with it and um, I, I suppose came back feeling refreshed and really even more passionate about wine and I felt that that was, that was enough for me, I made the switch. Great. So yeah. And the local produce is also quite important to Scotchman's yes. Hill as well, with your platters, that's all locally sourced. It is, so we'll, 
we've uh, we're, there's Drysdale goat's cheese. Mm -hmm. we're, we're just introducing the platters, so we're in the process of putting things together, but Drysdale goat's cheese are just down at the end of our road. Oh, nice. um, yeah, you'll see the goats out there. <laughs> Um, they get very hungry. They, <laughs> they're making a lot they, of cheese. They are, exactly. So uh, it's beautiful cheese. Um, there'll be a distillery down on the other side of the corners. corner. You'll see it's, there's a sign that says Whiskery. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's... How did I miss that? Uh, have a look on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> I will. It's, it's really exciting to be down here at the moment. There's so much going on. But, and, and we've got the Winter Shiraz Weekend coming up as well, which I should have mentioned with the Shiraz. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got uh, this one and a number of other single vineyard Shiraz as well. So we'll have a masterclass, the winemakers so, all. Yeah, that'll be all, the winter Shiraz. Yeah, so that's July eight and nine, mm -hmm. middle of the school holidays. Um, and it's our regions, we're known for Pinot and Chardonnay down here and mm. you know, Sav Blanc. Yeah. Um, but I think sometimes you can be a bit pigeonholed. Our Shiraz down here is not just ours, but the other vineyards uh, make fantastic Shiraz. And it's a good time to come down and and try it and get yeah. to know the different types. And learn about it from, from the winemakers. The winemakers. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So, so. Gavin, thank you yeah. so much. You're welcome. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>